Uh, we move on the next presentation. Thank you very much. As, uh, the title is uh, Improved Energy Efficiency via a Parallel Elastic Element for the uh, Straight Leg to a Vertically uh, Compliant Robot Slider. So, presenter is uh, one, uh, Professor one. Okay. Yeah. Yes, uh, please. Okay, thank you. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. So, I will present. Um, my paper and uh, the title is Improved Energy Efficiency via Parallel Elastic Elements for the Straight Like the Vertical Compliant Robot Slider. And we are from uh, uh, Imperial College London, the Robot Intelligence Lab. So I will first give a short introduction of the slider robot. And then I will uh, give a background about the zero versus the parallel uh, elastic actuation mechanism. Then I will talk about how to improve the energy efficiency of the walking by using the Bayesian optimization. At last, I will show the results. So most of the bipedal robots has uh, a knee as shown uh, on the right. So we call this anthropomorphic design. So normally for this design, there are five or six degrees of freedom in each leg. So on the hip, it has pitch, row, and sometimes it has yaw. It has a, it has a knee, which is a pitch, uh, pitch uh, joint. And on the ankle, it has pitch and a row joint. So this kind of design uh, looks like animal leg, it uh, looks like animal. However, it has several uh, disadvantages. The first one is always walk with bent knee because uh, there is a singularity in the kinematics if the walks on a straight leg. So because of this bent knee, so the actuator must produce high torque. Also, because there is an actuation on the knee. So this significantly, uh, uh, it has a significant proportion of the leg mass, which has to do the actuation and the transmission on the knee. And because of this, it has to consume excess power on the hip motor to move this leg. So is this possible to, to design a walking robot without knees. So we propose our novel design, which has a straight leg. So we don't have knee on the leg. And instead, we move this um, um, piece joint um, up to the hip with a prismatic joint. So it has the same functionality as the knee However, with this design, the mass will be more concentrated closer to the body. So the leg is more lightweight. Therefore, the excess power consumption from the bent knee walking is eliminated. Of course, it will make the uh, hip design more complicated, um, but we can handle that. Therefore, uh, we, uh, made our uh, robot, which is called a slider. It's an ultra lightweight knee lace and a low cost bipedal walking robot. So the goal of design is novelty, the low cost. Uh, in total, we spent around um, 10,000 pounds. We want it to easy to manufacture and also lightweight. So this is our robot. And the overview is it has 1.2 meter tall and weighs only 16 kilogram. So it's, uh, it's like a human, human uh, lower body. It's not like uh, a toy. And total cost is 7K pound. And most parts are 3D printed. In total, it has 10 degrees of freedom with nearly legs and it's capable of 3D walking. And the way that this controller through ROS 
uh, with uh, 500 hertz control frequency for the uh, lower level joint uh, controller. And we have the encoders on the motor side and also on the after side. And we have the AMUs on the pivots. Okay, so now we have the robot. However, we want to improve the energy efficiency of the working. So um, for a lot of robots, like animal, uh, like animal. So um, um, people used to uh, add springs uh, on the joints in order to reduce uh, the impacts, also, also to uh, reduce the energy consumption. So there are two ways um, to add the elastic elements. The first way is to add the uh, elastic elements in series with the joints as shown from the left. Also, another way is to add these elastic elements in parallel with these joints. So basically, um, both the elastic elements and the joints, they uh, apply force in parallel with each other. So because of the unique design of the slider, so it makes us very easy to add the parallel elastic mechanism on the robot. Basically, we just attached a spurn in parallel with this prismatic sliding joint. So as we can see here, so this slide joint is designed basically as a, a pulley back, a pulley belt mechanism. So the pulley is get inserted into this um, belt and this belt is tensioned by the tensioner and then the pulley can move up and down inside the belt. And to add the spring, so basically we add the bungee cord because the bungee cord is, uh, is much easier to add. And we just attach to the top of the top of the leg and also um, to the sliding uh, to a sliding uh, sliding shell. So we can add this parallel elastic elements as shown from here. So we also date the system identification of the bungee cord as shown here. So as we can see, the strange length of the bungee cord has a nonlinear um, dynamics, nonlinear relationships with the applied force, especially with the first 20 centimeter stretch length. As you can see here, it's, it, it is nonlinear. We also did with uh, different diameters and they have the similar uh, relationship. So this is nonlinear. Also, when the robot is walking, there are also frictions inside the joint transmissions. So it's very hard to use the model-based approach to get an optimized configuration of the boundary cord so that it can minimize the energy consumption of the walking. Therefore, we try to use the Bayesian optimization to give us an optimal configuration of the boundary cord so that it can minimize the most of the energy consumption. So the, for the Bayesian optimization, first we will have a black box function defined by ourselves as well as acquisition function. Also, we define a maximum iteration. And for the output, we will be the optimal configuration, which minimizes this function. And we first collect a small data set as the initialization. And while the iteration is smaller than the maximum iteration, it will first um, get the next query uh, configuration by maximizing the acquisition function. If you does the evaluation of the object function and then add this new data point to, and then update the Gaussian process and also the acquisition function and then to the next iterate. So in our specific scenario, we define this black box function and the energy consumption. For the energy consumption, because we can get access to the low level uh, 
data of each joint. So basically that's just an integration of, uh, of the, this is just the multiplication of the current and the voltage with the integration of the type. So we did also the real robot experiment. So the robot experiment, it's meant to find the optimal configuration of the boundary cord, which minimizes the energy consumption. And we want to use the Bayesian optimization to find the optimal parameter. And uh, because this COVID, we cannot do the full walking, but we test with the vertical sliding motion designed by the sine wave. Also we test by two different motions. One is fast motion, one is a slow motion. As we can show here. We can see uh, this is, uh, we do each iteration, each, uh, each iteration, we have a uh, turn up and down of this sine wave. And then we calculate the total energy consumption. And the configuration is by uh, the stress length of the bonded cord. And you can see here, this is a slow motion. So uh, you can see the, uh, the optimal configuration is here. Okay, so as you can see, we put the results on the, on the table. So you can see um, compared with um, the energy consumption without the boundary cord for the a slow motion, which is 2.5 Hertz, the energy consumption improves by 15%, 0.5%. And for the fast motion, it, it improves um, around 12%. Also, we found the optimal stress length of the boundary cord is around seven centimeter for both motion. And that indicates that uh, the same boundary cord configuration may be applied onto various different speeds. Um, thank you very much. Thank you for interesting presentation. So, uh, is there a question? Okay, uh, Clive, uh, Professor Clive, please. Uh, yes, hello, hi. Uh, it's Clive Lupin here, editor of the Industrial Robot Journal. Uh, very interesting presentation, thank you. I'm wondering, thank you. is it possible to um, create like a customized bungee cord or have bungee cords working in parallel that have slightly different characteristics to sort of optimize the, uh, their operation? Yes, that's a very good question. Actually, we thought about this. So uh, yes, because uh, as you can see, uh, we test the bungee cords with different diameters. Also, we try to um, put two boundary cords in parallel with each other and attach together. This will create, gives more, much more force. Uh, however, due to the lockdown, so we haven't got enough time to do more extensive experiments. But this is actually in our future plan. And in future, we also want uh, to test the energy consumption while the robot is walking. Yeah. So yes, this is possible. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. So time to have. Uh, so it's time to go. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.